Today we will be looking at Revelle's 1976 Chevy Sport Stepside Pickup 4x4. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and take a look at this amazing model kit. The 1976 Chevy Sport Stepside Pickup Truck 4x4 includes one plastic model kit for ages 12 and up, skill level 4. This is a 124 scale model kit. This side of the box shows details of the model kit including the length of 8 inches, number of parts is 102, molded in white with water slide decals. You also get a write up of the kit which I'll include in the comment section down below and this paint chart with actual colors and these refer to the new Ravel paints that you can get from Ravel of Germany. This side of the box actually shows two different variations, the first being the stock pickup truck and the second being the stock pickup truck again, but with features like the roll bar and the overriders on the bumper, as well as the fuel tank in the back here for uh, filling up when you run out of gas and the spare tire off the back. Here we can see the engine and the front three quarter and rear three quarter of the stock variant. On the bottom of the box, we get a skill level chart here for the model kit. It says skill one is for ages six and up, skill two for eight and up, skill three is 10 and up, skill four, 12 and up, and skill five is 13 years. Has all the different part listings on here as well. And again, the five skill levels are more of a Ravel Germany thing than they are of an American thing. So this kit is a skill four, which are basically in an American skill rating would be a two and a half. Now we will take a look at the instruction sheet for our Ravel 76 Chevy Sport Stepside 4x4 and I always like to show the instructions to the model kit so that you know what it looks like to build this thing and in case you lose your own instructions and you need some help in there this video is sure to do that. Ravel always includes a full paint chart in the instruction sheet so you know which colors to paint your model. They also include instructions on how to apply the water slide decals, as well as all the symbols that you'll see in your build. In addition, they also supply a chart showing the part name and a listing of what all the parts are, including the number on the instruction sheet that refers to that part. The instructions are in English, French, and Spanish, or even German. Step one shows our engine assembly with the engine block, oil pan, starter motor, oil filter, and the right and left hand side of the transmission molded as one piece. These two pieces will glue together. So you will have a seam line in along the bottom, in the center of that oil pan, and in the center of the transmission. So make sure you remove that with your hobby files. Now we also have the intake manifold being glued down, cylinder heads, and your choice of valve covers, one being chrome custom and the other being painted stock. And you also get the front timing chain cover, which will glue on the front of the engine block. This Ravel Chevy pickup truck was originally introduced by Monogram back in 1978. That was the first issue of the kit. And as you can see, the engine block is very simplistic, which is typical of a Monogram build. So here we have the air cleaner being dropped down on here. There is no carburetor. So you have to use your imagination to believe that's bolted onto one. You have your right and left hand side exhaust manifolds with the extension of the exhaust pipe off the ends. And here we have our belts and pulleys. This would be an alternator, although it looks like a little tiny ring. So you have to look at the real part 28 to see the full alternator. And we have our fan here. So all of this will go together to complete your Chevy engine block. Step three shows our two-piece transfer case being glued together and then being glued on the back of the engine off the transmission and the whole engine being dropped onto the chassis. Here in panel four, we can see the four-wheel drive set up. So what we have is the front axle with the differential and leaf springs. We have the tie rod here and the anti-sway bar, all that being glued to the front of the chassis. Out back, we have another anti-sway bar here and the rear differential with the springs again. And the exhaust pipes and mufflers are actually molded to the body. So you will have to line up the exhaust pipe extensions off those manifolds possibly into little holes back here in order to make it all line up perfectly. Panel 5 shows the completion of the chassis and undercarriage assembly. And here we have this front stone shield being glued up under here. Now in this part here, this is an optional piece. I don't know if it's a winch or what it is. It's not actually noted as to what it is. 
So if you know, please let us know in the comment section down below. Here we have two shock absorbers per side for the heavy duty suspension and this anti sway bar which slips under the drive shaft and then hooks up on here onto the differential. Panel six shows a step that we need to do four times. This is our wheel assembly. So what we have is the outer wheel itself, the tire, the wheel retainer, and the wheel back. Sandwich all these together and then put them onto those axle pins on your chassis. And just to confirm what I said, here in panel seven, we can see the wheels being put onto the ends of the axles, just like I mentioned. Now, one thing that is nice to note is you can see how the shock absorbers are both going down into that central point like a V, and that's the way they should be. Panels eight and nine show our interior, and what it looks like is a lot of decal placement. You get these wonderful decals for the seat belts, as well as items on the floor. And here we have our dashboard with two hanging pedals, which is always nice. Down here we have the steering column and steering wheel being put together, as well as the optional CB radio for the good old 70s, where everybody had a CB radio. Good buddy. Now again, there's that interior tub with the seat belts, and here is the dashboard and our shift lever being dropped into place. Panel 10 shows our windshield and our rear view mirror being glued in place, and here we have an option to actually take our number 11 hobby blade and cut out this panel in the roof and drop in a sunroof. Panel 11 shows our radiator and the support wall as well as the fan shroud being glued in place. Here we have the back of the cab, which includes the back panel and the clear glass for the rear window. And down here we see it all going together with the wall being placed in here and that back panel being placed on the back and then the interior being glued up from underneath. In panel 12 we see the wonderful grill with the headlights being pushed into place. The headlights do have a pin on the back and always remember to get those north and east, south and west instead of at some weird angle because they are supposed to be up and down like that in the real truck. Now here we see our grill being glued in place and the chrome bumper being glued down here. It does look like there are some little pins or something that it could clip into, but we'll take a look at that with our plastic parts. Panel 13 shows the cab being mounted onto the frame, and what it looks like is on the front of the frame there are some little spots to hold onto on the cab bumper, or inside the cab, and these would be put in place and then the back end would swing down and drop across the two gas tanks. Panel 14 shows our upper radiator hose being glued into place. One end goes on the radiator and the other goes on top of the Chevy engine block. And then we add on our hood in here as well. Next up we have our truck floorboards and this is being shown from the underside here. There are four little holes that you can drill open if you want to add in that roll bar. If not, just leave them closed. Then we get these sides of the box being glued on, as well as the tailgate. Panel 16 shows the step side fenders being glued onto the bed, and here it looks like you have an optional paint color. This, I do believe, would be an undercoating. Or you can paint it as the body color. Next, we see the truck bed being dropped onto the frame, which looks like it would be supported on these little blocks up here, and ones up close to the cab. What? Me worry? Panel 18 shows the optional roll cage being added in. So in order to build that up, we have to add in the fog lamps up top, and you would make two of these. So this is the lens for the fog lamp being glued into the housing. And then, as you can see, the two fog lamps get glued onto the back upper top of the roll bar, and this whip antenna for your CB radio would be glued right there. Panel 19 shows the optional roll bar being dropped into place. Panel 20 shows the support bars for the roll cage being attached at the top and then the bottom pins being dropped in on the floorboards. And to complete our stock pickup truck, we have the backup lights being glued onto the side of the back of the box, as well as the rear bumper being glued in place on the ends of the frame rails. Panels 22 and 23 show the optional off-road edition. So here we have a right and left hand side military style gas tank, which you can glue together and then paint up. It even has a strap molded in place. And then here we have the two piece rear spare tire and the little metal gate for this, which gets the tire glued here and the oil or gas can glued onto here. 
Panel 24 shows the rear assembly of the truck with the custom pieces to it. So here you can get these little folded up chains and glue them up top here. This could work for stock and custom, but this is definitely the custom swing out gate here, which would also glue up into here. And on this side, you can have the tailgate down with the extended chains hanging from here and mounting on the bottom there. Panel 25 shows the side mirrors being glued into place, and here you have the option of the overrider bars to glue up on the front of the bumper if you're building that custom off-road pickup truck. Finally, the back of the instructions show all the decal placements for our 76 truck, including the front and rear, as well as the top and the side view. Getting into the plastic parts, we have our cab here, and you can see in typical monogram style fashion, you have batteries molded in place, as well as windshield washer bottle and everything else that's up in those wheel arches. Interesting, dual batteries. Don't really see that too often. And here we have our windshield wipers and that nice little vent that's up underneath there. Uh, because the molding is basically molded like this, there are a lot of soft details on that firewall, which can always be enhanced with some real wires or what have you. There is the back of the cab. The side marker lights look nice. The door handle looks like a GM handle, except for on the top where it really needs to be opened up so you can grab your hand in there. Uh, very smooth body on here, actually. Not too detailed. Up underneath, we have that cutaway section. If you wanted to cut this out and put in the sunroof, you could. Not too bad on the mold marks. There are some in all four corners of the roof, two in here, and then in the wheel arches, which you can easily remove with the number 16 hobby blade. And it is interesting to see the back wide open. We're pretty used to seeing a pickup truck with the back end molded in place. This parts tree includes a lot of the parts to make up our truck bed, including the tailgate, the two rear fenders, the box sides, and the floor as well as our roll bar and our chains in extended and folded versions, as well as our air cleaner and our intake manifold, and that back swinging gate for our spare tire and our gas tank to mount on. One thing that is really nice in the way that they did this is it has the actual wood grain molded in as well as those bed rails. Look at the nice detailing up under here, the ribs for support and strength. Again, up underneath, there are mold marks pretty much everywhere on here. So a little bit of filler on the deep ones and just a bit of sandpaper on the light ones. There we have the Chevrolet logo stamped into the back. This is sort of reminiscent of the 1950s on there. Again, really cool stuff. You got your rear side marker lights as well on those fenders. So again, beautiful work done by Monogram way back in the day. This parts tree includes our Chevrolet hood, the back panel for our cab, both sides of our spare tire, the wheel retainer clips, and here we have the tie rods and support bars and all that. <laughs> this one got bent up a little in the bag. And we also have our interior bucket back here. So bringing this up to the camera, again, you can see the nice pull on the side showing the tire you know, the uh, sidewalls of the tire, I'm trying to say. There's our wheel back for the other side. Turning this over, we can see the nice bench seat in here. Really wonderful detail on that. However, our side panels are very weak on detail, so you'll have to dress those up. Ah, down here we have the floor pedal. So again, you would be adding in those decal seat belts on here, and I do believe there's a decal for that floor pedal. That must have been what it was. There are mold marks here, but they do get covered over by the tire. But under a hood, that is a different story. They actually go right into the bracings on here, so you will need a little help cleaning that up for sure. Here is the trademark for the model. Copyright 1978, Ravel Incorporated. They took off Monogram. It's originally a Monogram kit. But as we all know, Ravel bought Monogram, 
And the rest is history. Here we have the chassis for our model kit. And one thing that I found interesting is there's a mold mark on here, a name that says Ravel 1977. But the kit was actually originally released in 78. So again, one of those conflicts under here. Easy enough and in a good location to sand off if you want an authentic undercarriage here with the twin saddle tanks. We also have twin mufflers here with the tailpipe sticking out the side just like they should be. You could drill a little hole into the ends of each of these so that it does look like an actual tailpipe, functioning tailpipe and not just a, you know, plastic rod sticking out the side. Again, really nice detail on here, but very smooth and simplistic. Up on the other side, you can see all the bracing in here for mounting your engine, and you can also see that there are mold marks everywhere under there, so you'll need to clean those off again with that number 16 hobby blade. Here we have our suspension components with both axles, the front axle and the rear axle, which of course are four-wheel drive, so they include the differentials on here, as well as the drive shafts. We have our wheel backs and the upper radiator hose and our fan as well. So let's see how these relate to our camera. Again, nice work in here. The springs look really good. Mold marks on the back. Just keep an eye out for mold marks. I think I'm going to stop mentioning them <laughs> at this point. There's the fan with some nice soft detail on it. Again, not bad, and it will get the job done. This parts tree includes our engine details, transfer case, all these shock absorbers, belts and pulleys, front stone shield, as well as the overrider bars and our gas tank on here, cylinder heads, the fan shroud, our firewall with the radiator, or sorry, not our firewall, our rad support with the radiator, and our dashboard. So how does this actually match up with a real 76 Chevy? Well, you be the judge. Here we have a wonderful dashboard with all the little gauges on the side, as well as our speedometer and our tachometer, possibly even the clock. There's our little radio back there, as well as the heater vents and heater controls, and our big dashboard with the glove box as well. Again, really nicely done. The engine, again, has a bit of soft to it. Soft mold, not hard detail. There's a starter motor and our oil filter, and you can see that the oil pan is actually molded in place. There's our transfer box, as well as the support brackets for our roll cage, steering column. There's the alternator. Okay, let's take a look at this thing. It is just a tiny little ring. Oh, I see. The alternator is molded onto the fan belt, and this is just the very back of the alternator. That's why it fits in there like that. Huh, interesting. Funny they just didn't mold that flat. <laughs> but at any rate, I don't know, they must have had some reason for it. Again, nicely detailed. Not too bad on the mold marks. Take a look at that fuel tank with the strap. Wonderful work by Monogram. Here's our chrome components for our Chevy truck. And these wheels look really wonderful on here, as well as the chrome grille with the Chevy Bowtie logo right in the center. We have the two-piece truck-style mirrors, as well as the chrome bumpers. CB radio is actually chrome-plated. That's kind of cool. There's our steering wheel and the back of the fog lamps, as well as the chrome-plated valve covers. And a few more bits and pieces we'll take a look at as we go through here. So take a look at those wheels. Those look just like the real Chevy truck wheels. Again, the grill is nice. A little bit of black wash in there would be good. And you can check out that video on how to do that just up here. Click on that as it goes across, and it'll take you right to that video. You'd have to put your mouse there, of course. <laughs> here is a gear stick lever with the boot, as well as the rear view mirror and our chrome steering wheel. And the whip antenna on there. Again, really cool. The 70s kits from Monogram sure used a lot of these and those. <laughs> Thinking of the uh, the Impala there. Oh, look at... Oh, those are the brackets for the mirrors, of course. So again, really neat stuff on there. Wonderful. And always remember to paint the back of this grill here black. So when you look under the hood, you don't see a great big piece of chrome, because that's really toy-like, and we don't want that. Here we have the clear parts tree, and there's our rear window, the sunroof, the front headlights, as well as the lights for the fog lamps, and we also have our windshield. Not too much to really show on here for detail. 
there should be the crosshatch pattern on these headlights and there is a little bit of a sunken in area to mount the sunroof perfectly. Again, really nice stuff. It's good that it came in a plastic bag here so that it prevented it from getting all scratched up. Here we have the tires for our model kit. And as you can see, the sidewalls actually don't have the manufacturer's name on here. Like for example, there's no Goodyear or Firestone, which actually I've been finding in a lot of the new release kits, the sidewalls are being smoothed out. Now, I don't know if that's to avoid some copyright issues or just so that the model companies don't have to license tires from GM or whatever the case may be. However, the tread pattern is still on there nice, as well as the side pie plate crust ends on the tires on the outer surface right where my thumb is there. But I just want to show you what the tires would have looked like back in the day. What we're looking at here is the original 1977 version of this tire, which is found in the Monogram Jeep CJ7 kit. And what do you see here? Well, you see Goodyear Tracker A-T. And that is what this tire is supposed to be. But of course, as you can tell, they've removed the Goodyear Tracker. But look at the, look at the actual tread pattern here, as well as the pie crust sides. We are looking at the same tire. This is just the new edition, which I'll put there, and this is the original edition. So if you can find old collections of model car tires or whatever, look for these and replace the new ones with these ones. Here we have the decal sheet for our nice Chevrolet 4x4 off-road. You can see the wonderful seat belts here. It would have been nicer, I think, in my own mind, is if they had molded these as a three-dimensional instead of just a flat, you know, seat belt with a buckle. There's some nice chrome up here for, I guess that's a roof. Goes along the roof on the top and rolls down the sides. We also have these nice door panels with a wood grain, so that'll bring it up inside. There's for the dashboard, as well as the instrument panels and our air vents. And there's all the little gauges for that cluster. So one, two, three, four would go in here, five and six in there and there. We also have these nice white stripes for our truck, nice pin stripes. These are for the gas tank, the flammable decal, as well as the gas ones. And these are under hood uh, information, like on the fan belt and whatnot. Not the fan belt, but the fan shroud on the radiator. There's our side marker lamps, which are nice that they made those into decals, as well as the side script and the Chevy logos. Chevrolet for your tailgate if you're painting it a dark color. Uh, you can have the white letters on there. And we also have the wood paneling. And look at this. We get portions here with these dots on them. That's pretty cool. Actually, at first, when I was about to say about these, I thought they were for drilling in the roll bar that they would actually accommodate that around with the decal, but that's not quite the uh, case. So what you would do is paint your pickup truck bed, put these down, put on a clear coat or something to lock this in, then drill the holes for your roll bar. That's the way I would do it, because then you're drilling into the de decal instead of trying to punch a hole through the decal, you know, when it's wet or however that would go. But overall, again, these are really wonderful looking decals. Oh, we have a 1976 Michigan plate, as well as a USA number one for your Chevy truck. Well, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Revell 1976 Chevy Sport 4x4 pickup truck. What an amazing kit. Great one made by Monogram back in 1978. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the usual stuff check out our Monster Hobbies online store, www.monster-hobbies.ca, and look on that right-hand side where you'll see an airmail envelope. Sign up for our newsletter to save weekly on many items all throughout the store, as well as categories. So until next time, everybody, we'll see you out there on the road.